Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video we're going to talk about how to use the defaults and the options on the new Prototrack RLX lathe control. And as you've seen from some of the other videos, we have quite a bit different screen here with the touch screen and some of the options that we have. So let's start with the defaults, okay? First of all, on the right or on the left hand side of the screen is the defaults button. And what's in here is your ability to set most of the things that you like to do and keep the same so that you don't have to make as many choices as you're actually programming, okay? So we're gonna start at the top and work our way down and explain what every one of them is, okay? So at the top, you'll see here, the first one says feed per revolution. So that allows me to program to go along with my surface footage and control that. But if I use a drop down menu, you'll see that I can also change it just to uh, inches per minute the way that the older Prototrack lathes work, all right? So we're gonna leave it where we are. Um, the second question is on surface footage. Of course, I can change that the same way and I can change it from using surface footage to use an RPM, all right? The third one says spindle direction, and it's asking about how you wanna run the machine, and most of the time you would be working in the forward direction. However, with the RX, you can also tell it if I wanna use tools on the backside and run things in reverse, and just so you know, if I do run something in reverse, and then I forget to actually tell it to go in reverse when I'm in the run mode, it will shut down and remind me that you have the wrong direction in the spindle when you're in the run mode. Okay, but we're gonna leave that in forward. Next question is peck type on drilling events. Okay, so just like every prototrack we've had for the last 20 years, in this drop down menu, you have the ability to use variable, fixed, or chip break. As we all know, a chip break doesn't come out of the hole, it just stops to break the chip and moves farther in. My variable, of course, lessens as I get deeper into the hole and my fixed pecs makes every pec exactly the same length, okay? So we're gonna leave that at variable. Um, our reference positions, these are my soft limits. So if I wanna program not to exceed a certain X minus, a certain X positive, same thing with Z, um, I can put those in here and then if for any reason I make a mistake that sends it outside of that work envelope, it's gonna stop and tell me that I've done so, okay? For this case, I'm gonna leave them off. I turn them on, however, by just pushing that button and then fill in the blanks. And then when I don't need them, just push it again and shut them off, okay? So some places I have on-off switches and other places I have drop-down menus. The next part is talking about your home position. Unlike the SX lathe, in here I can set a home position that'll automatically default to every program that I make. You'll see that I have it set at six and six. So in my programming structure, I also have the ability to change what that home is for a certain job. But if I don't put anything else in, it's gonna use the default, which is six and six. All right, last one at the bottom here says, do I wanna work in units of inches or millimeters? Same thing with a drop down menu. And then as I use my finger to move up, you'll see the next thing I have is to set my maximum rapid rate. Because the RX has a faster system, the rapids are up to 400 inches a minute. If you don't like it moving that fast, you can simply decrease that by putting in 250 or 150 or whatever you're comfortable with, and that's the fastest it'll get in its rapid motion, okay? Next one on here is whether I want to default to using chamfers or conrads when I connect my mill, I'm sorry, my lathe and my arc events together. So as you know, in the milling machines, you only have chamfer, or you only have conrad, but in the lathes, you have both. And so normally in the older control, you had to use ink set or ab set to determine whether you wanted a radius or a chamfer. Now I can just put it in here and it's always gonna be chamfer, okay? Cycle events, it's asking me how I wanna default. In this case, I want it to be depth of cut. Every time I do a cycle event, I don't wanna to have to change from number of passes to depth of cut like I do in the SX control. My finished cuts, I can also put in here for my diameters, I have it set at 25 thousandths. And for my Z finish cut or my faces, I have it at two and a half thousandths. Uh, my retract distance, this is something new. I have the ability to tell it that when it moves away from each rough cut, I can control that. So in this case, I've got it moving 20 thousandths away and then wrapping back to take the next cut. Go up a little farther and you'll see here in my thread events, it's asking me whether I wanna use depth of pass or number of passes, okay? I like to use number of passes when I'm doing threading because just like when I'm peck drilling, it allows each cut to be a little less as it gets deeper in and you have more engagement of the tool, which will also get you a better thread, okay? On my outside threads, I have the ability to control how much it retracts between each cut of the thread, and I also have the ability to control it on an inside thread, which is very important because sometimes in a close tolerance, I don't have enough room to back off without running into the other side of the hole when I'm on the inside. So being able to adjust that is really good. In my groove events, I can tell it the finish cut that I wanna have for every groove event. I can tell it whether I use a continuous move 
which starts on the groove and walks all the way through, or if I want to do one half from each direction, okay? My step over percentage for my grooving events is set at 95%, which will work in most cases. But if I have some really hard material or something like that, I might want to lessen how much of a bite it takes. Here, my peck type for my grooves, it'll actually peck when it does the grooving section and roughing. And I can tell it the same thing. Do I want to use chip break, variable, or fixed? Let's go a little farther down here in my boring events. I can set my standard finish cut for my boring events, which the SX model did not have. So that's an extra added bonus. And then my retract distance, same as I talked about with the threading, I've got this set of 10 thousandths because I have the same problem where if it backtracks too much, it's going to run in the other side of the hole. And then my cutoff event, I have my peck type set at chip break, okay? And that should cover everything that you're going to do in the default. So wherever I leave this page is where it's going to be when I open it back up later. But what we're going to talk about next is how to use the options. So just to be clear, everything in here is the way you want to machine most of the time. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you want to see the next video, just check this one out over here. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.